chemistry lecture number 22, electron configuration. Electrons occupy energy levels. Energy levels have sublevels, sp, d, and f. Sublevels have orbitals. The s sublevel has one orbital, p has three orbitals, d has five orbitals, and f has seven. Now suppose an atom was stripped of its electrons. Then suppose uh, we add the, uh, suppose, sorry, the electrons were added back one at a time. Uh, what energy level, sublevel, and orbital would the electrons occupy? Now the electrons fill the orbitals according to a pattern. So here's the question. We've got all these different energy levels. We have different sublevels. You know, S, SP, SPD, SPD, and F. And then within these sublevels, we have all these different orbitals. You know, the S has the one orbital here, and the P has the three here, and the D has the five. So where would the electrons go if you were to add it one at a time? Would it go to this energy level, or this energy level, or this energy level? Uh, if the electron went to this energy level, what sublevel would it go to? And if it went to a certain sublevel, let's say it went to the P sublevel, would the electrons, you know, go here, or would they go here? So we have to figure out where in all this mess the electrons would go. And the distribution of electrons follows a pattern. Now we're going to use a diagram to uh, find the pattern. And first we need to use the chart below. Now, this is a chart that you saw in the uh, previous lecture, so you should have this memorized. The only addition we've added is that in the fifth energy level, uh, there's S, P, D, F, and I think G comes after uh, F, but usually you don't go any further than uh, F. So just remember that these are the sublevels inside each of the energy levels. And we could take this out to 6, 7, and 8 and just keep writing S, P, D, F, but we only need to go up to 5. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a diagram based on this information right here. So this just shows the energy levels and the sublevels that are in each energy level. So the first energy level has an S, the second has an S and a P, third energy level has S, P, and D, fourth has S, P, D, and F, and then after that, all the rest, we just write S, P, D, and F. So fifth has S, P, D, and F. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start drawing arrows through each of these terms. And the arrows are going to start from the top left and go down, I'm sorry, top right and go down to the bottom left. And we sort of slice the arrows through. And each time we draw an arrow, it has to uh, slice through the first term of the next um, horizontal row. Anyway, so the first arrow goes through like that. Okay, so the next arrow I draw has to go through the first term of, this, of the next row. So the next row is this row right here, and there's the first term. Next arrow goes like that. Here's the first term of the next row. So the next arrow has to go through like that and hit that one. Here's the first term of the next row. So the next one goes through here. Here's the first term of the next row. So the next arrow goes through here. Now it's possible I could have written a row 6 and a 7 and keep drawing that pattern, but we only need to go up to 5. Alright, now look at the order in which we draw the arrows. The first arrow goes through 1s, so I'm going to write 1s. The next arrow goes through 2s, so I'm going to write 2s. The next arrow goes through 2p and 3s, and that's what I'm going to write in that order. I'm going to write 2p first, and then 3s. So I'm going to write 2p, and then 3s. The next arrow goes through 3p and 4s, so I'm going to write 3p, and then 4s. And then the next arrow goes through 3d, 4p, 5s. 3d, 4p, 5s. Alright, so these are written out in the order in which the arrows slice through them. Alright, next thing we need to do is I'm going to draw horizontal lines over the top of each of these terms. And the number of lines I draw depends on the sublevel. S has one orbital, P has three orbitals, 
D has five orbitals and F oh we didn't go as far as F well yeah so we don't it has seven but we won't need to use it so this was in the previous lecture you need to memorize this okay so one S S has one orbital I'm gonna draw a single line above it like that 2s once again S has one 2p, p has three orbitals, so I'm going to draw three, one, two, horizontal lines over it. S has one, three p, p has three, one, two, three, four s, s has one, three d, d has five, so we're going to draw five lines above the three d, one, two, three, four, and five. 4P, P has 3 on top, 1, 2, 3, and then 5S, S has 1. And that's it. So this configuration here is, this little diagram is what we're going to use to figure out where to put the electrons. And this shows that um, as you go from left to right, you're getting further and further away from the nucleus and energy increases as you go from left to right. So you can imagine the nucleus would be right here and all the electrons are gonna to wanna to get close to the nucleus so they're gonna fill in these little slots from left to right. Okay. So, I didn't draw the 5S here because the font would have been unseeable. <clears throat> We're only gonna go up to a 4P. So, as you go from left to right, energy increases um, and basically it means when we say energy increases it means you're getting further and further away from the nucleus uh, you need to memorize this diagram or memorize the procedure for making this diagram alright now next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw up and down arrows on the horizontal lines to indicate that an electrons in an orbital and in general we're going to fill the lines from left to right and electrons want to get close to the nucleus, so the left side gets filled in first. So, when we fill in this diagram, we're going to start on this side, and we're going to go across. Okay. And when you fill in the uh, diagram from left to right, uh, that's also known as the Aufbau principle. And it just means that electrons fill the lower energy levels first uh, before filling the higher energy levels. And that's just a fancy way of saying we fill in the diagram from uh, left to right. So here are the rules we're going to use for uh, filling in the uh, orbital diagram. Alright, so first you choose the lowest energy level. That means you're going to start as far left as you can. Choose the lowest sublevel, S, P, D, or F. Once again, it just means we're going to go from left to right. Fill the orbital with a maximum of two electrons and have them spin in opposite directions. And I'll draw you a picture. I'll show you what that means in a bit. And before a second electron can be placed in any orbital, all the orbitals of that sublevel must contain at least one electron and spin in the same direction. And that's a lot of words, and we'll show you what rule number four means when we actually draw the diagram. Right now, it probably doesn't mean much. It'll have meaning when you see it actually done. Okay, so to do this, um, you need to use a periodic chart to get the atomic number. And remember, the atomic number tells you the number of electrons the atom has. All right, so hydrogen has one electron. Where does the electron go in this whole mess? Well, we start from left to right. The first electron goes here, the leftmost. We're going to draw an arrow to indicate that it's an electron. So the arrow represents an electron, and that's the electron spinning in one direction. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. That's the electron configuration of a hydrogen. Let's do the next element. Draw the electron configuration for helium. Two electrons. One two. And notice I put two arrows on here. Why? Because each line or each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Notice also that one arrow is up and one arrow is down. When two electrons occupy the same orbital, they have to spin in opposite directions. That's the Pauli exclusion principle. Let's draw the electron configuration for the next element. Lithium. Three electrons. Here we go. One two, three. And we have to put the third electron here 
because this one already has two in it. Can't hold any more than two, so if we run out of space here, we go to the next one over. Let's draw the electron configuration of uh, beryllium. Four electrons. One, two, three, four. Okay, two electrons on that one, spinning in opposite direction. Let's draw the electron configuration for boron. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're just going from left to right. We're putting two arrows in each one, and the arrows are spinning in opposite directions. All right, now we're going to do one. It's going to deviate from the pattern a little bit. So I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. Draw the electron configuration for carbon. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where you place the six electron. Now, why didn't I place this electron on this line upside down? It's because of rule number four. Rule number four says that before you can put a second electron on this one, all these other ones have to have at least one arrow in them. All right, so I can't put a second electron in this one until all the rest of these also have one electron. And when you put them in, they have to be facing in the same direction. All right, let's do nitrogen. I think you can continue to see the pattern. Seven for nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once again, why didn't I put this one in either this one or this one? And before either one of these lines can have a second electron in it, all the rest of the lines have to have one arrow on them. Okay, let's do oxygen. Eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I can start putting a second electron in this in this one because these other ones now have one electron in them. All right. So I can't put second electrons on here until all the rest of these have at least one in them, and they do. So that's why I was able to take the eighth electron and put it right there. Let's do fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and I was able to put the second electron here because all these other ones had at least one electron in it. All right. Let's do 10 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I was able to put the last electron here because all these other ones had at least one electron in it. All right. Let's do it for vanadium, atomic number 23. You ready? So, I think you should be able to do this since you've seen the pattern. 23, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21, 22, and 23. And then the 24th and 25th would go here and here. So 23, 24, 25, and then the 26th would go here. And then you would fill it up here, and then you would start doing these, okay? So before you can put second arrows in any of these, all the rest of these have to have one in them. As soon as they all have one, then you backtrack and start filling them in. Now instead of drawing arrows, an abbreviated form of the electron configuration uh, uses superscripts. And the number of the superscript is the number of arrows. And for example, if the 3p orbitals hold 5 arrows, you would write 3p5. So for example, let's write the electron configuration of chlorine, which has an atomic number of 17. So here we go, 17 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And the way we would abbreviate this is 1s has two electrons here, so you have a 2 there. Two electrons in the 2s, so we have a 2 here. 2, 4, 6 electrons in the 2p orbital, so 6 would go there. Two electrons here, 2 there. Five electrons here, 5 there. And so you would just rewrite this like that. So that's the abbreviated electron configuration for chlorine. And in fact, we can abbreviate this even more. We can abbreviate electron configurations further if we use the configuration of the elements on the far right vertical column of the periodic chart. And the far right column has, <coughs> excuse me, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So basically here's your periodic chart, and we're going to use the electron configurations of these elements on the far right hand column. All right. So these here. So let me give you an example. The first part, uh, we're going to abbreviate chlorine. And the first part of the configuration of chlorine matches the configuration of the neon. All right, so this is the electron configuration of chlorine that we just drew. If you look at the first part of the configuration for neon, you've got 10 electrons right here. And neon has 10 electrons. So here's neon, atomic number of 10. So if we were to abbreviate this using these superscripts, we would have you know, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p5. This electron configuration matches the abbreviated configuration for neon. So instead of uh, writing all this out, why don't we substitute in place of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6, we'll just substitute the uh, symbol for neon, which is going to be this, in place of all this, and we won't have to write as much. So instead of writing this whole thing out, we're just going to write the letters NE in place of this part right here. So the configuration of chlorine, abbreviated, can be written as the first part of neon plus 3s2, 3p5. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 22, electron configuration.